What is up folks? Welcome to the second part in the series where we're taking a look at this uh, Seiko Pogue 6139 caliber and uh, in this uh, video we're going to be uh, disassembling the movement in preparation for cleaning so I'm going to go through uh, how I disassemble this movement other people might do it uh, slightly differently but this is the way I've done it for um, for many many years and it, uh, it works for me so it'll probably work for you if you're trying to follow along uh, with this video. So without further ado, let's uh, crack on. So the first thing I like to take off is the uh, rotor. And uh, this movement holder is, is my own specific mo movement holder, um, which I made uh, again many years ago uh, because I work on this movement uh, a lot. So I'm just gonna remove the rotor. And that's all we need to do on this side for now. So we'll put that in the, uh, in the tray. So I have a tray here ready for all the parts and then we're going to flip it over to the dial side and just here in the center uh, there is a brass uh, c-clip and we're going to use a driver and gently lift that up Now during this video I'm going to try and keep my head out of the camera as best as possible. I'm trying to do this from a distance that I don't normally do it in so it does make it particularly difficult. So if there are any mistakes that I make during this disassembly you'll know why. It's because there's a, a camera right in front of me. So then we can lift off the day wheel. And there are several screws, four screws, one here, one here, one here and one over here. We're going to undo those to lift off the date cover plate. Remember with disassembly, if you're disassembling a movement for the first time or it's uh, it's not something uh, that you usually do, if you have a camera or even uh, your smartphone, is take photos um, as you disassemble it. Uh, that way um, you can reverse the direction of those photographs uh, when you want to reassemble the watch. Uh, quite a lot of watchmakers uh, do that. I know a, a watchmaker who's uh, been doing it 70 years and he still has to do it sometimes when he comes across a movement that he's never seen before uh, which you'd think he has in 70 years of doing it but um, not always the case so there's a couple of parts we can lift off here one is the uh, the quick set date jumper and over here there's a, a spring under slight tension so what you'll need is a piece of pegwood to hold the tension as you lift off this It'll spring on that side. If you don't remove the tension, then it tends to uh, want to spring off into the distance. So now we can remove the day disc. Date disc, should I say. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to release the tension on this spring here, which is what... Um, it activates this lever here, which uses... is what you, you, you would use to... Uh, in fact, if I just show it, it would be better. You can see that it moves there and what that does is it controls the quick set uh, date lever and allows you to quickly change the day date uh, on this particular movement. So if you've got an issue with uh, the 6139 not changing the day or date then some of that problem could lie uh, in this area as well as that part that we just took off. Let's see if I can show it here. So this is the quick set date lever. Quite often these are actually slightly bent and sometimes these become uh, malformed and that can stop the uh, the day date from working properly um, but we're going to remove the tension here because it sits right underneath there we go so now that's just loosey-goosey there next part we're going to remove is the uh, the date uh, or the calendar wheel assembly here This one can actually vary depending on the movement. Sometimes this is all plastic parts except for the lower gear and sometimes it'll have the uh, the metal uh, parts uh, but they all work the same kind of way. 
and most of the parts for the 6139, uh, with exception to the chronograph parts obviously, uh, can be exchanged with the 6119 uh, calibre. Not all parts, but some, you'd have to check the uh, technical sheets for that. So we're going to remove this uh, intermediate date wheel. Now again, this is another part, this one's actually metal, but quite often these are plastic. Um, but sometimes you can get the metal ones, which I think are better, because quite often that particular gear that sits there in the movement does have a tendency to get uh, chewed up. So we're going to remove the hour wheel. Now we're going to remove the cannon pinion. And in order to do that, we need a cannon pinion tool. This is the cannon pinion tool uh, that I use. This is actually an American one. It looks very similar to the version one uh, that you can get, but this is designed for cannon pinions from wristwatch all the way up to large pocket watches. Where I think the version one only handles certain sizes, so um, don't quote me on that, but I think that's the difference between those. So we're going to remove the cannon pinion, we're going to stop there for the uh, the dial side. Uh, because now the cannon pinion is off, the, the centre wheel will now be free to remove from the other side, and then once all the other side is done, we can fl flip it back over and finish off with this uh, this motion work area. So the first part of port of call for this uh, side will be to remove the balance. We're going to put that aside once I can find my little soft container. So we're going to remove each balance bridge screw. Excuse my hands if they get in the way. The balance will actually go back in place uh, once everything else has been removed from the movement and that way the balance will be uh, cleaned inside the main plate, uh, keeping it nice and safe. So there we go, and that's the balance. And we're just going to put that away in this little uh, soft pot. Now what we want to do is we want to release some of the tension that's in the watch because we don't know how wound up the mainspring is. You can't always assume that the mainspring uh, has fully offloaded all of its power. So what we're going to do is these two screws here on the automatic upper bridge, we're going to loosen them just slightly and then we're going to lift this poor wheel here and that will help release uh, some of the initial tension and then we can undo all the power from the mainspring. So we want to undo these screws just about a turn and a half just enough to lift up the plate and as we do this we might actually hear it click might not there we go so there's some of the tension come off the automatic system if you don't do this then you won't be able to um, release the power from the mainspring as effectively so we can just fully undo these screws now on the automatic plate and there's the pull wheel and magic lever. Separate those parts. There's a cover plate for the automatic system. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a large driver and we're going to hold the ratchet wheel and we're going to release the tension from the mainspring by holding the click out of the way once we've turned it. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get this on camera but I'm going to put the driver in He says, and I'm going to put a little tension to move the click out of the way. Yep, yeah, there's quite a lot of power still left in the watch there. So there we go. Now we've released all of the power uh, from the movement. Now it's safe to disassemble the rest of it. So the next stage will be to remove the pallet cock and pallets. And uh, that's the pallets removed. Uh, there are two springs here on the chronograph side. There's one here, which is for the uh, hammer return spring. And then there's this uh, spring here, which is for the uh, actuation. So we want to release the tension from these two springs before we remove this chronograph bridge. But we also want to release some of the tension from this uh, long spring here, which is uh, pressing on the hammer. 
And once all those springs uh, have all their tension released, then we can remove this top cover plate uh, to get access to the, uh, the parts underneath. So I'm putting my thumb in the position because this spring has a bit more power than the other one. We want to just gently allow the tension to come out of there. So there we go, we can see the tension has gone out of those springs now. And then this spring in the middle, we just lift that up slightly over the top of the hammer like so. So now we're ready to remove this top plate by removing these three screws. Quite often these three screws end up being loose um, on quite a lot of occasions when I work on these watches because they're never tightened down uh, quite enough when they were last serviced. So that's those three screws. Let me just very gently lift off the plate. That last screw is just ever so slightly stuck in there. There we go, and that's the uh, chronograph plate. Like so. And now we have access to all the chronograph uh, section here. So what we can do is we can remove uh, this wheel here, if I can get hold of it. Then uh, the minute recording wheel. And then we can't take the hammer off yet because we have to remove the hammer spring. And uh, the hammer's already decided to jump off. So this is the hammer. And there are two edges uh, which are uh, pushed against the cams on both the uh, chronograph wheel and the minute recorder wheel. And that's what uh, resets the, uh, the hand. So if you're having any issues with the reset uh, of a Seiko poke, then quite often uh, the hammer or the hammer spring can be a very common uh, culprit with this particular movement. Uh, not always the case, it can be other parts, but this is one of the areas uh, to look to changing or improving uh, if that's the situation with your particular watch. So now we can remove this spring as well. Now the next parts that we can remove will be these two levers here. So we remove this screw and this screw here. If you're unsure of um, where to put the screws uh, once you remove them, you can actually replace the screws in the plate afterwards, after you've removed the part, and that way you'll know uh, exactly where they go. But obviously I know uh, this movement inside out, so I don't need to worry about uh, which screws are which, because I know what all the screws are. So now obviously would be a good time you could replace that screw there and the screw there and put them back in position. And that way when you come back to reassembling the watch you'll, you'll know that that's what those screws are uh, specifically for. You can take the chronograph, um, the column wheel here off if you like in the position that it is or you can do it later once you've um, removed it from the movement. Either way uh, it doesn't uh, particularly matter. But now we're going to remove the, uh, the ratchet wheel and uh, the click spring. That's a very clean ratchet wheel. They're not normally that polished, which means this watch probably hasn't been serviced as often in its lifetime as it should have been. And there's the little uh, click there. So now with all of those parts out of the way, we don't need to worry about this cover plate or this um, column wheel spring or these levers. These can all be left in position. The only part we need to remove now is the column wheel, but we can do that once we've removed this, uh, this upper plate. So there are three screws, there's one here, one here, and one here. We can remove those three screws and uh, then we'll have access to the train wheels underneath. That screw is particularly loose. When uh, working on these kinds of watches, any kind of chronograph, um, it can often be easy to become overwhelmed uh, thinking that it's, it's not something that's possible to do. 
Uh, and the way I like to think about it, the way that I've thought about it, the way that I've learned and been taught, um, is instead of thinking of it, of it as a whole system, is to try and think of it as individual systems. So you have the, the date system, which is an individual system, if you learn that. Uh, the automatic system, uh, the way the automatic system works on different watches, you learn that. Uh, the way the chronograph system works, you'll find that they're just systems placed on top of other systems. Uh, and if you learn each system individually and then you can combine all of them together, it gives you kind of a better way of uh, coping uh, with the complexities of certain watches. Uh, so that's just something to, uh, to think about. So we can lift off this top plate now. Hopefully there's no gear stuck to it, but I feel oh, we're safe. So that's the top plate. One of the common uh, wear points on this top plate is uh, this bearing here for the barrel and uh, this point here uh, if this has become ovalized or uh, opened up then this plate will either need to be replaced or uh, a, a new jewel fitted to both of these areas but that's one of the most common areas uh, to be dealt with we'll put that to a side because we've got to take the column wheel off so now we have the chronograph wheel so we're going to remove that and that just simply lifts out then the third wheel and the escape wheel and the mainspring barrel and now we remove this uh, center wheel bridge the center wheel bridge screw is actually different from all the other screws on the movement you'll actually find that it has a matte finish rather than a polished finish um, but again you can replace that screw uh, back into the movement plate once you've removed this uh, bridge if you wanted to, you could put that back in there if you wanted to make sure that you, you didn't lose it and couldn't find it again. Um, but you'll know that it's that screw because it's the only one on, on the movement that has a, uh, a matte finish and not a polished finish. So now we can re remove the center wheel. Now if we had to left the cannon pinion on the other side in place, uh, then we wouldn't be able to remove the center wheel. Uh, we'd have to turn it back over and do that. And that is basically uh, the breakdown of the, the the movement side of the watch now we can flip it over in a second to remove the rest of the keyless works and then refit the balance so we're just going to open up the barrel so what the barrel is there very dry black uh, grease the barrel armor I don't know if that's really going to come up on camera, but uh, that's completely dried out. It'll look very different uh, once it comes out of the cleaner. So we're going to remove the column wheel. Now to remove the column wheel and the washer that sits underneath it, we're going to need another driver. You'll need to use a driver in this space here to lift the tension off the spring whilst you undo and remove the column wheel. So if we just pop that in there, seems like fine surgery, but it's not it's something you soon get used to. Keep that tension away whilst we remove the parts. There we go. And simple as that. So there's the, uh, the bridge and then we have the column wheel screw and the shim. I like to place these with the train wheel parts because I know that they're very specific. And now we can get on with the rest of the movement and flip it over to the dial side. And only a few parts left to disassemble here and then the movement is ready for cleaning. So we're going to remove this uh, plate here. This is called the minute wheel uh, bridge. There are two different screws here. One has a flat top um, which protrudes above the plate and this one sinks into the plate so remember those positions and again if you need to uh, replace the screws back in the plate once you've removed this bridge but again I've done this uh, probably thousands of times now so I know where all these uh, little screws go that's the minute wheel that's a setting wheel we're going to remove the setting lever spring 
Uh, unlike uh, a lot of Swiss movements, the setting lever spring in this particular watch isn't really held under uh, much, if any, tension at all. So you can just remove the screw straight away. These screws on this side are actually uh, matte finished as well, but hopefully you'll be cleaning them separate. And here we have the yoke and yoke spring combined. And this is the setting bolt. It's all one piece, there's no screws. Looks to be in good condition. That's another part that commonly wears. And then we can pull out the stem. And underneath here we've got the clutch wheel hiding. There we go. So now we can turn the plate back over to the train side. And we're going to refit the balance in position. So remove these screws. Little buggers. There we go. So. Gently place the balance in position and then line up the bridge on both sides. Give it a little shake to make sure that the, uh, the balance is in the correct position before we uh, put any screws down. Now you can use a piece of pegwood just to make sure that the, uh, the balance bridge uh, stays in position. Now the reason I call it a balance bridge and not a cock is because it uh, meets the plate at two positions and not a single position. So that makes it a bridge rather than a cock. But on other watches where there is only a single screw, then that becomes a cock. Which is why in this particular movement, the, uh, the pallet, it's called a pallet bridge because it goes around like a horseshoe rather than a pallet cock where it's only one sided. But I'm not gonna bore you with the details. And that is the disassembly of the 6139. And now all of these parts will be put in the little uh, cage and uh, they'll go through the cleaner and they'll come out uh, absolutely uh, gleaming, hopefully. And then they'll all be ready for inspection and reassembly. But that'll be for the next video. But that's it for this video. So be sure to uh, subscribe, like, comment, um, add me to your favorites list and um, come back for the next one in the series. I'm um, not sure if I'm gonna show the cleaning because it's not particularly exciting. So we might move straight on to the uh, reassembly side of things. Uh, but until then, uh, take care guys and have fun.